Welcome to Grad Guidance, Career Tips and Tools for Graduate Students. I'm your host, Allie Irk, Associate Director of Graduate Student Career Development at Lehigh University. Today, we'll be discussing the value of professional conferences with Robeson Jr., a PhD candidate in the College of Education in the Teaching, Learning, and Technology program. Welcome to Grad Guidance. I'm Allie Irk. Today's guest, we have Robeson Jr. Welcome. Thank you, Allie. It's great that you can talk about your experience with professional conferences. So I wanted to start by just asking you to tell us a little bit about your background and your program of study. Okay, so uh, I'm Junior and uh, I'm Brazilian. Back in Brazil, I used to be an English teacher and also uh, uh, English for a specific purpose uh, professor in the local college. And uh, I also have a, a graduation certificate in distance education. So everything that is happening now, <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm trained for that since 2012. And now at Lehigh, I am in my fourth year in the PhD program uh, in teaching, learning and technology. And uh, our program uh, mostly focuses on how to create learning environments creatively and with uh, innov innovations and technologies, especially uh, these emerging technologies, just like augmented reality, virtual reality, that it's my case of uh, research. And I really, my personally, my passion and what brought me to this PhD is to investigate the affordances of video games in general and the learning games for all learners across the levels. And uh, more specifically, I am investigating uh, how can video games help us teach 21st century skills, like soft skills, collaboration, uh, problem solving, and, uh, you know, flexibility and everything like that. That's great. So I appreciate you sharing your background with us. I think your research sounds fascinating. I want to talk a little bit about professional conferences and thinking about that, I'm wondering what impact attending conferences has had on you and what skills you gained from these experiences. Well, uh, I, have, I have been attending conferences since undergrad, like in 2006. Uh, I was very lucky that my undergrad program heavily focused on the importance of uh, participating in extracurricular academic and professional activities uh, as a requirement for the uh, ob uh, obtaining the, the degree. And uh, after I finished my, uh, my bachelor's in arts, I decided to share my research findings with the uh, State Association of English Teachers in the uh, state that I lived in Brazil. So it was my first ever pref uh, conference. Uh, it was an international conference. And uh, we, we received teachers uh, that taught English as a foreign language from dif different states and even like some guests from other countries. And I was on the spot for the first time, one hour presentation, like slides in the back of that. It was very like full blown presentation. And not only I was able to like uh, break the ice and start doing that because it's a skill, you have to start doing it at some point, but I, I was very surprised at how fast the benefits uh, came about. Like networking, lots of people, very important people, scholars and colleagues, uh, learned about what I was researching in the time, like there was autonomy and learning strategies for foreign uh, language teaching and learning. And then uh, more opportunities come like easily. You, you start receiving mails, people start thinking about you as one of the references in that area. So uh, this for me has been uh, very important. Uh, and now that I came to Lehigh, before I even like came to the US, I already was preparing something to present here because I, I've always uh, felt that the more you are engaged into like 
attending the conferences or, if possible, presenting your uh, studies or something that you work with or you are investigating, it's always good because it will always add up. You never lose anything. It's just something that you can uh, add to your experiences and also to your CV. <laughs> so I, I love that you're sharing about the opportunities to network and how attending conferences can really open up new opportunities for you as a professional. That's fabulous. So you mentioned presenting at, at some conferences and I saw you recently featured in the College of Education newsletter for presenting at the 2020 Immersive Learning Research Network Conference. Could you share a little bit about your experience and also any tips that you would share with students since you've been doing this now for a little while presenting at conferences? So that's that's very interesting question because uh, although I res uh, my research is in the uh, virtual reality and uh, emerging technologies and everything else, it has been the very first time that I was presenting and participating in a fully uh, virtual conference since the pandemic struck. And then uh, I was quite anxious and excited at the same time because I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I was thinking that because our conference and like our uh, the, the uh, Immersive Learning Research Network works with this kind of uh, tech like virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed realities, I thought, oh, it's going to be with like virtual reality headsets and everything. But then uh, I, lear I, I was surprised that I learned that uh, in, when it comes to technology, we need to make sure that we prepare to serve and to reach the most of the audience. So I, this was a great lesson for me in my area, like academic and professional knowledge. And what I realized that it wasn't like with headsets or anything, it was just like a, a computer uh, game environment. So we had our avatars and we could walk about the, the location, the virtual location. But the funny thing, Ellie, is that although it was virtual, I felt home. Like I felt I was seeing again all the people that I met last year because I, I joined the I Learn Research Network last year. And then uh, it was so good because since I had presented last year in London, uh, when I, we came to the virtual space, everybody knew my name. When they heard Junior, they knew what I, what I did. They knew what kind of research I did. They knew where I was from, that I was like in Lehigh University. So all that magic of like belonging to your uh, professional and academic circle was there. So it was very fascinating. And uh, we were lucky to be uh, able to present three works. And we published uh, two conference papers. Uh, one is about the study we did last year in a public high school here in, our, uh, in the Lehigh Valley high school uh, we were investigating how feasible is bringing uh, virtual reality headsets into the classroom and the results were out, outstanding uh, and we finally were able to finalize in like processing all the uh, numbers and the interviews from the students after the experience and then we published that this year uh, and also I was presenting another research poster about research considerations for designing immersive learning for English, uh, to promote language, uh, English learners' uh, ability to engage and, you know, be accessible to them. And uh, just like I said in the beginning, sometimes we, in conferences, we do not have to have a complete project or complete work to share. In this case, I presented a working progress paper that was like, a combination of lots of uh, graduate courses I had taken. And then since I had pre uh, prepared so uh, many different final projects that converged to this topic, I said, oh, that's a great idea to share and get some feedback on how people from like uh, the area or even people that work with this audience can provide feedback by seeing my ideas and how I organize them. So it's very interesting. Uh, finally, that's very, very curious. It's an, an, an anecdote. Uh, I had lots of technical difficulties during this conference and people usually assume that, oh, you are doing a PhD program in teaching learning technology, so you are a tech researcher. Yes, like I have lots of tech, you know, 
experience because I have been using that for more than 10 years in my, uh, my job as a teacher. However, we never know. Technology always surprises us. And I, I, in the first two or three days of the conference, I couldn't speak. People didn't hear me and I couldn't hear them. So for me, that was a very like fascinating experience because I was totally immersed in the environment. I had met my friends and my colleagues, but for the first time in my life, I was mute and you know, and everybody, I love to talk and share and stuff and I couldn't hear them. Mm -hmm. And then I said, oh my gosh, I am being able to feel what it's like, like to be mute and deaf, but still to be working. And I saw how important it is, like the turns in conversation and people were still there, like supporting me and they were trying to troubleshoot with me. And even during my first time slot of the presentation, I couldn't speak or hear anyone. So I just talked like with the chat and my advisor was next to me in my presentation booth. So he was speaking. I hope he really said everything that we should have said. And I was trying to provide support via chat. So it is, this happens to everyone. We always need to try to troubleshoot and improvise and do the most that we can out of any situation when it comes to technology. Yes, and I, I think what you shared is an excellent tip for students is you have to be adaptable and flexible. There's going to be opportunities to learn and grow because there are situations that come up. So it sounds like you've, you've had some of those experiences yourself. I also really appreciated how you shared about um, through these conferences, you've really gotten the opportunity to position yourself as an expert within your field about your research. So I think that's really a really great point. And I love the focus on community and those connections you made within your professional circles. I think it's important to maintain those connections that you've made and continue to develop those. Now, one of the other topics I wanted to touch on related to conferences. So certainly it's important to locate conferences, identify those that apply to you. It's important to research ahead of time, prepare, know your audience. Another piece that I think comes up sometimes is how you can get to a conference. And so uh, we're fortunate here at Lehigh to have a highly engaged graduate student senate. And I know you served as the travel grants officer last year. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the opportunities available for Lehigh students regarding travel grants for conferences. Uh, first off, uh, the Graduate Student uh, Senate offers uh, two uh, kinds of support. So if you are just attending conferences, it doesn't matter what conference it is, like if you're experimenting and you're trying to, it's your first time or you want to check on a new area, a new uh, work group, uh, there is the support of like $75 for you to attend. Uh, I usually, when I was the Terrell Grants Officer, I usually said that if there are lots of opportunities around here, literally High Valley in Philadelphia, in New York, that with $75, it almost covers everything, like the round trip in one day, for instance, you can go and check it out. The second kind of support is when you are presenting or sharing what your work, you, you get double, like $150. Some students at first, they go, oh, it's so little, but the fact is that not, uh, it's very unlikely that uh, financial support for travel is going to cover everything. So the trick and the recommendation, the general recommendation is we need to find lots of sources. So the Graduate uh, Student Senate is one of them. Another thing that I would say uh, we have at Lehigh uh, and most uh, likely in other universities, the department, the, all the departments, they have kind of specific uh, endowments and you know, uh, funds to help their own students to go to specific uh, conferences. For instance, I'm from College of Ed here at Lehigh and we have the uh, student travel uh, dean award something like that and then i use this one as well so it was like 300 dollars uh to the to the list so let's see i had 150 gss now 300 so i had 450 dollars when you prep for your 
travels, like your trips, you can buy like plane tickets beforehand and then you get like round trip tickets uh, for $180, $200. So it's really feasible to even have your uh, all conference covered. When it comes to international conference, which is very common here at Lehigh, our students are great. Uh, I have been uh, awarded and I am very thankful to the Office of International Affairs. Uh, they have a very important uh, support that is called the DT DTGO. It's Doctoral Travel Grants Opportunities. Uh, and they want, when you have a project that is going to be presented uh, internationally, you can apply for that. And it's like, more like they, they award up to $1,500 because international uh, uh, fare is a little bit more expensive. But what I want to say is it is totally possible for, for us to like find the sources. If we don't know where, how to start or where to start, we have the support from the Center for Academic and Professional Development. We have the student uh, advisors in every department, in every school. Uh, we also have our advisors. We have colleagues that have already started, uh, you know, gathering sources for financial aid or even start attending conferences. So it's possible. Uh, I, I think you, you did a great job of summarizing some sources of support for students, which I think is important for students to be aware of. So I I'm, I'm think that that was wonderful. I do think it's important to invest in your career development and attending conferences is one way to do that. And there's never been a better time than now as many conferences now are going virtual. So you can attend anywhere from your own home. So I think it's important right now to actively pursue those opportunities. So uh, I appreciate so much you taking the time to talk about professional conferences and your experience. With, to share with other students to learn from you. No, it's it's okay. Like I've always said, whenever I can share anything that I've been through and I learned, why not? So thank you for the chance to share my experience with every, everybody. Thank you for sharing your expertise. So you can continue to find out more about topics that are important to graduate students on Grad Guidance. So you can tune in next time. Thank you. To locate a relevant professional conference, ask your advisor for recommendations. Network with your peers and use social media. Reach out to professionals and alumni on LinkedIn and Lehigh Connects. Check academic journals or magazines in your field and join a professional association. You can search for a professional association in your field by using the link below. Explore opportunities for assistance at Lehigh Check out the Graduate Student Senate Travel Grants and the Doctoral Travel Grants for Global Opportunities by visiting the link below.